that the only glory is in Islam. That the pride is in Islam. And once you abandon Islam, you have nothing left. Even if you have your millions, even if you have your citizenship, even if you have your passport, is no pride except in Islam. There is no glory except in Islam. There is no way except the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah said, in the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a hadith Qudsi, if they come to me from every door and from every way, they will not enter the Jannah except behind you, ya Muhammad. So Abdullah understood this. And Abdullah understood, radiyallahu anhu, is, wa anna wa'dallahi haq. That the promise of Allah is the true promise. Then when he promises something, he's going to give. He's not going to deprive. He's going to give. That's why he stood fast to the last. And then the king, he said, oh, just kiss my head. Just give me some, something so I can let you go. Just so I don't get humiliated in front of my people. He said, under one condition. Who's putting the conditions now? Who's putting the condition? The strong or the weak? Who? Who's putting the conditions? Abdullah. He's now putting the conditions. He said, now I put the conditions. If you release, everyone with me. Then he released them. And then he kissed his forehead. Radiallahu anhu wa Allah. Shuf subhanallah. When you have pride in Islam, look at Rahman ibn Awf, uh, look at Ab, uh, 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 Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. You know Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He has, he had legs like twigs. Very, very, very small and skinny. You know the skinniest person you see? The, the, the shortest and the skinniest person? That's Ab, Ab, uh, uh, Abdullah, ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. That's how he is. Skinny and with the skinny legs. He's so skinny that in the battle when he wanted to cut off the head of Abu Jahl, he had to stand on his chest. And then to cut off his head, then he tied it with the rope and he couldn't pick it up. You know why? Because it's full of Jahl. It's too heavy with Jahl. So he had to drag it. That's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he became a Muslim, what did he do? He is, he used to work for Abu Jahl. He used to work for him. He was a worker, mind his sheep. Poor person. Weak in body. But when he accepted Islam, this weak, small person became a lion of Islam. Because that became someone that Quraysh could not handle his words anymore. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to go to Mecca. I'm going to sit under the Kaaba and recite the Quran. And let them do what they like. Prophet said, Hawan alayk, take it easy. These people that, yani Abu Jahl, so jahil, that he probably he grabs you, he will break you to pieces in his hand. He said, I don't care. What happened? The pride in Islam came to his heart. Changed the person inside out. He went to read the Quran. And then the Quraysh's attacked him and beat him up. So severely that they cut off his ear. Then he go back the next day. And he go back the next day. Because he found the glory is in Tawheed. The glory is in La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. The glory is in Islam. By following the Quran. But not fearing anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By having Allah as your companion and as your friend. He is the wali of the true awliya of Allah. The source of help is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the source of support is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By adhering to the Quran and Sunnah. By going back to Islam and living Islam as it's supposed to be lived and adopting Islam, not just the image of Islam. Not just the short thawb and the siwar and the beard and the beautiful speeches. No, by going back and implementing Islam. Implementing the Tawheed in your life. Implementing the Wala and Bara implementing Islam, this is when 
you get back the glory. But just like this, soup, everything goes. Whatever, yalla, salad, tabule, everything accepted? No, you're not going to go nowhere. You're going to remain stagnant and, and you will always be humiliated. Amr ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, you know the story, he accepted Islam. He entered in the deen of Islam. He said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, why are we giving a secret da'wah? You have to remember, ya ikhwa, they were minority like you are. Maybe, or they were oppressed more than you are. You say, how? Of course. Do you do your da'wah secret now or in an open? So no, but they used to do a secret da'wah. Whisper. One of them would be scared about his life. Just by talking to Muhammad sallallahu he'd be scared that the Quraysh now going to torture him. Just by talking to Muhammad sallallahu By just being with him. And the brother is scared to come to the masjid. You know why? Because maybe the masjid is bugged. Allah, your head is bugged. With bugs. That's the truth. Where is the pride of Islam and not fearing except Allah? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu when he accepted Islam. He said to the Prophet sallallahu straight away the pride start to work in his heart. Of who he is. He's a Muslim now, Muhid. He said, what are we scared of? Are we on the help? He said, yes. Are they on falsehood? Are they the kuffar al-mala'in? He said, yes. He said, khalas. Let's go and tell him about Islam. Let's go out in the open. That's why he deserves the label Al-Faruq. Al-Faruq means the one who separated between Haq and Battle. Between false, between Haq, truth, and falsehood, the battle. Out of pride. And even in Sulh al-Hudaybiyah. Shoot the pride how much? In Islam, not the wrong pride. The, your pride of your um, Ferrari and Porsche, your pride of your muscles, your pride of your six pack, your pride that you're six feet tall. That's the wrong pride. Or you're white, you have blue eyes, or because you're tall and tall, dark and handsome. That's not the pride. That's not the pride, yeah, ikhwah. The pride is pride by Islam. In Surah al Hudaybiyah, in the Hudaybiyah Treaty, what did um, Umar radiallahu anhu do? The Prophet ﷺ is signing the treaty. They said, they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, write, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Hayl ibn Amr, he said, but we don't recognize the Rahman ar-Rahim. We only know Allah. Say, Bismika Allahum. He rubbed it. He said, this is what Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah agree on. He said, we don't like this Rasulullah. Take it. Because if we believe you're Rasulullah, we'll have told you. Take it. He, Umar radiallahu anhu, lost it. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what's this? He wouldn't accept it even from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he regretted that after Umar radiallahu anhu. Why did I question Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, yani what's this now? Why, why are we compromising with them? We don't need to compromise with them. Remember they were weak, 1400 only. Weaponless. They had nothing. He said, why would we agree to such? How can we deny that you are Rasulullah? He said, come down. I am Rasulullah. He went to Abu Bakr. The man, his brains couldn't handle it. He couldn't accept it. He said, yeah, Abu Bakr, aren't we on the half? He said, yes. So are they false? He said, yes. He said, why then we accept this humility in our deen? He said, Ya Umar, he is a Rasulullah. Be with him, khalas, don't argue with Rasulullah sallallahu The point, Umar radiallahu anhu, because he knew he was on the haq, and he was proudful of, and with, the haq. He was proudful of it, that he is on the haq and on the truth. That's why he doesn't want to compromise, not even that much, even that it's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who's signing the treaty. But Umar radiallahu anhu did not know the wisdom. Allah called it, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. We have opened to you, O oh Muhammad, a great opening. This is something in ilm Allah and through a revelation. These are as-sabiqun al-awwal. 
the proudful Muslims. These are who understood the pride of Islam. That's why Allah then blessed them with Badr and blessed them with all the, the victorious battles that you heard of. Do you think the battle of Badr, the Muslims would have won it if, if they are like us now? Let's be honest. If they are like us now, would they want battle of Badr? No. Because they knew Islam. They were proudful of their deen. They implemented Islam. Then Allah said, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَشْهِ Allah gave you the victory of Badr and you were humiliated. But that victory came with a lot of steps towards us. It didn't come from nowhere. It didn't come from nothing. The companions went through Mecca and learned the hard way. So the Muslim, when he expects victory, he has to work hard for that victory. And it starts with you. To implement Islam. To have the right understanding of Islam. The right understanding of Tawheed. And that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. All the acts of your heart. Loving Allah. Loving the true awliya of Allah. Not the wali who died 1000 years or 500 years and he flies in the air and jumps. No, the wali who's sacrificing everything fi sabilillah. He sacrificed the wealth and his life fi sabilillah. By loving awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By loving the, the brothers in Islam. By establishing the correct brotherhood in Islam. By having the love and by having the hate towards everyone who hates this deen. Because he hates Allah. Enemies of Allah. To, to implement the true reliance on Allah. At-tawakkul ala Allah. By implementing the true acceptance of reliance on Allah. By accepting the, the traits of rububiyyah, that Allah is the true creator. Nothing is created except by Allah. Allah is the true sustainer, al razak So I do not seek the haram. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And whomever fears Allah, he'll make a way out for him, and he sustains him in a way that he does not know. So my rizq has to be from halal. I cannot feed my children haram and expect them to be obedient to me. I believe that Allah is the controller. He is the one who controls my affairs. He is the one who controls my affairs. That gives you the confidence in your life. To go about your life proudfully with your deen and with your Islam. To believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of everything. Allah owns everything. Allah owns this country that we live in. And our Saudi Arabia. And owns America. And owns England. And owns everything. If he wants... He can turn these countries upside down. Allah is the owner. And He is the one who controls When you believe in your heart, you implement that tawheed in your heart, and then you would believe in your heart that only Allah is worthy of worship. With your limbs, you implement. With your tongue, by only saying the haqq and the truth, and the sadaq. You only say the truth. Because that's a ibadah. Implemented by your tongue. By not conspiring against your brothers and sisters in Islam. But not saying anything to backbite your brothers in Islam and awliyaullah. And implementing by your limbs. Your salat, your fasting, your tawheed, your tawaf, your hajj. Everything to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then now, you are the true muwahid that you can say, I am member of Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ikhwah, 